It's nice and fluffy. <laughs> Hi, and welcome to my channel, where I'm exploring the history of classic dishes by trying out recipes from the past as they were originally written. So join me to find out the origins of some of our favorite recipes and perhaps discover some vintage classics that have been forgotten. Today, I'm gonna to be trying out a vintage monkey bread recipe from 1945. So we all know monkey bread as being a really fun dessert because it's sticky, it's sweet, and you get to eat it with your hands. And it's so simple. Dough balls tossed in butter, sugar, and cinnamon, stacked into a bun pan, and then baked until golden and delicious. You just pull individual pieces off and pop them into your mouth to enjoy. But where did this recipe actually come from, and why is it so popular in American culture? Well, based on my research, it seems like the very first person to publish a recipe for monkey bread was Seizu Pitts, a notable silent film actress, who apparently was also the inspiration for the voice and mannerisms of olive oil from Popeye. Anyway, back in the 1940s, Seizu developed the recipe for monkey bread with Anne King, who, depending on various internet sources, was either her friend or her cook or her neighbor's housekeeper or some combination of those three things and they published the recipe in the Winnipeg Free Press in 1945. Then, over the next few decades, monkey bread started appearing in bakeries and magazines all around the country. But the dish was further popularized by First Lady Nancy Reagan, who, according to IMDb, actually worked with Zezu Pitts on the set of Ramshackle Inn. So there's no proof of this, but perhaps they bonded over a warm plate of Zezu's monkey bread because Nancy was known to be a big fan of this dish in later years. When her husband was elected president, she was actually able to acquire her favorite recipe for monkey bread from her favorite bakery in California and serve this buttery pull-apart loaf for Christmas in the White House. I guess being First Lady has its perks, access to any secret recipe that you want. Nancy even published her own recipe in the New York Times in 1982. Although it's unclear if this is the same recipe that she got from that California bakery, or if she had kind of put her own spin on the dish by that point. So what's interesting is that although both of these recipes were called monkey bread, they weren't actually dessert recipes. They used very little sugar, mostly it was just there to feed the yeast of it, and they didn't even include any cinnamon. Despite that, I thought it would be really fun to try out Seizu and Anne's recipe from 1945 to see what it actually tastes like and how it resembles modern monkey bread. So it's worth noting that the recipe I'm going to use today has been cited on a few different websites and blogs as being the recipe that was published in the Winnipeg Free Press in 1945. But I couldn't actually get access to legible images of the newspaper to confirm that for myself. So we're just gonna be using these secondary sources today. With that, let's check out the recipe. First of all, the recipe calls for compressed yeast, which is a type of fresh yeast that isn't used very much by home bakers anymore. I've read that you can still find it in the refrigerator sections of some grocery stores, but I didn't really want to be driving all over town going from store to store looking for yeast during a pandemic. So I'm just going to use what I have on hand, which is instant yeast. But that brings us to another question, how much do we actually use? The recipe specifies the measurement of one and a half cupcakes, whatever that means. I'm assuming that doesn't translate to one and a half cups of modern yeast because, well, that's more than I have in my whole kitchen. And yeast is in short supply right now, so I'd rather not wait for it. So I've read that compressed yeast comes in blocks, sometimes in 0.6 ounce blocks and sometimes in two ounce blocks, but I can't be sure if a cupcake is equivalent to a block, and if so, what size block? I found a yeast converter online that claims 1.6 ounce block of compressed yeast is about equal to 2 teaspoons of instant yeast. So assuming the cup cakes that Seizu and Anne are referring to in the recipe are 0.6 ounce blocks, I should need 3 teaspoons of instant yeast. Which sounds about right based on other modern bread recipes I've used. If you're using active dry yeast, 1 block equals 3 teaspoons, so you should need four and a half teaspoons of extra dry yeast for this recipe. So another question I had while reading the recipe is about the butter. It calls for a half a cup of butter and then it instructs you to add it to the dough, but then later it also tells you to cook the dough balls in butter. It's not clear if that's 
extra butter or if you should reserve some of the initial butter for that purpose. I think that since monkey bread is supposed to be a special treat, we may as well splurge and use more butter. So let's go ahead and use the full amount of butter in the dough, and then we'll just use extra for coating. I'm sure it will just be more delicious that way. So I think those are the main sticking points of this recipe, so let's go ahead and get started. To the baking station! So apparently I matched my apron to my shirt, but that was definitely not on purpose. Anyway, welcome to my baking station. It is, as they say, where the magic happens. So I should note that I'm actually going to be cutting my original recipe in half because my bundt pan is a little smaller than a normal bundt pan, so... Anyway, it's probably for the best, otherwise I'd probably end up eating way too much monkey bread. So the first step is to scald the milk. Basically, we just need to bring the milk near to a boil, then let it cool to be lukewarm. I think I'm going to shoot for about 105 degrees. It seems that scalding the milk was more common in older recipes because it used to be an important step that killed bacteria. Since I'm using more modern pasteurized milk, this step might not be necessary, but I've also read that scalding the milk makes the baked goods extra fluffy, so it's probably worth the extra effort. Next, we dissolve the yeast and sugar in the lukewarm milk. Now let's just give that a good whisk to get it all mixed up. Give the yeast a chance to dissolve. Then let's add, add some flour. We're gonna start with one and a half cups and then see where it ends up. Quarter cup of butter, one egg that I've just quickly whisked, and last but certainly not least, half a teaspoon of salt. Now I'm just gonna mix this together with a wooden spoon before putting it into my mixer. Just until it comes together into a nice dough. So it's come together into a pretty nice dough. Still just a bit sticky, so I think I'm gonna add another quarter cup of flour. And then I'm just gonna knead it for about five minutes. It looks like it's come together pretty well. It's got a good texture that I like, so I think we're gonna stop here and let it rise. So now we just need to punch it down and roll it out. So the instructions say to use a diamond-shaped cutter to cut this into small bits. I don't have a diamond-shaped cutter, so I'm gonna use this little round cookie cutter. All right, we got a whole bunch of little dots, and we got a whole bunch of leftover dough, which I think I'm gonna to try to roll out again and cut out into more little pieces. I'm gonna get some butter melting so I can toss these little bits in them and start putting them into the bundt pan. All right, perfect. That looks like we've filled up our bundt pan about halfway. So I'm just gonna let this sit and rise for another half hour or so. So our monkey bread has come out of the oven and cooled down, so it's cool enough to touch. And now I'm just gonna turn it out. All right, now that it's done, I think I'm gonna take some pictures for Instagram and then we'll give it a taste. So I'm just gonna peel one of these off. It's really good. It reminds me of this recipe that my mom used to make every Thanksgiving. They were called buttery pan rolls, which makes sense because this is so buttery. You can taste the salted butter, which is really nice. It's nice and fluffy. <laughs> Maybe just a couple more. They're so, so light and fluffy. It's really nice. The dough itself is really good, really light. And the main flavor is dough and butter. I can't really complain about that. I think I'm pretty satisfied with this recipe. It's 75 years old and it still came out really great. It's so cool to think that people were making this exact recipe over seven decades ago. It just shows how food can be a wonderful connection to history and the people that actually lived back then. So this recipe reminds me a little bit more of a dinner roll than my modern understanding of monkey bread, but it was awesome to see at least one part of the monkey bread origin story. So if you enjoyed baking with me today and you want to learn more about different recipes from history, feel free to like and subscribe. And make sure to check out the second part of this monkey bread series where I further explore the dish's roots and test out a really interesting recipe from Hungary. I'm so excited to try it. <laughs>